Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. We've got that funk. I'd like to thank you for joining me. I know it's been a while since I made a video on this channel, and um, I realize now that I'm making it that it's been such a long time since I made a video on this channel that I've never announced on this channel that I have moved back to the United States. Uh, I've, I'm here on the porch in my beautiful house here in the Rocky Mountains, and I'm very pleased to announce to anybody who cares that I have um, been seeing someone for some time now, uh, but we lived, you know, on separate continents, and for most of the past two years, it just didn't seem like a relationship was possible. Um, but then it occurred to me that I have the ability and the right to move back to America if I wanted to. And once my kids told me that that would be okay with them, I was like, let's do it. So I'm very much looking forward to the opportunity now to get back into making more videos than I used to. Um, pretty soon I'm going to be getting a, a new laptop because this one is only just barely functional right now. Um, and when that happens, uh, I hope to be uh, making videos on a much more regular basis, both for this channel and the Breakfast Club channel, which I'm going to be on tonight with my usual uh, gaggle of co-hosts um, talking about uh, the topic of this video, I'm sure, as well as other topics. And I hope you guys join me over there on the Breakfast Club. So for this video, um, I have... I've been here for a little over three weeks, and it is very striking to me how uh, bad the situation is in America right now, um, both politically and from a public health standpoint. The COVID-19 crisis rages on worse than it ever has here in the United States, and the government seems even more inept than it ever has been at kind of dealing with it or not dealing with it, as the case might be. And one would think that when you've got a, uh, a, a crisis like this, which is nationwide, obviously it's worse in some places than others, but it's a nationwide crisis that demands federal attention. One would think that that's where the federal government would be putting most of its focus and emphasis. Sadly, that's not the case. Uh, Trump seems to be um, determined to um, stir things up inside the borders of the United States. Now, as everybody watching this contemporaneously will know, um, but I'm just going to elaborate for people who might come to this video after the fact. Um, in uh, about two months ago, um, George Floyd was murdered on the streets of Minneapolis by a police officer. George Floyd, of course, was a black American. Um, he was basically suffocated to death with a knee on the neck, it took almost nine minutes for the poor guy to die with people pleading with the cops to let up. Um, that sparked a national movement, which has gone on to this day, which is like two months later. And in Portland, Oregon, they had more than 50 consecutive days of protest before Donald Trump decided and, and, and the acting head of the Department of Homeland Security uh, in their collective uh, ignorance, decided it would be a good idea to send federal troops to Portland, Oregon to um, protect federal buildings and so forth. Now, um, I'm not even going to get into the uh, arguments about jurisdiction and do they have the jurisdiction to do this kind of thing and blah, blah, blah. Because for me, that is almost a moot point right now. Uh, from what I've seen on media reports, uh, the people who are secret police or whatever you want to call them, and I think it's a fair term to call them secret police because these people do not have identifying insignias. They don't have their name. They don't have the department from which they come. They have a, a camouflage outfits on, you know, with like uh, battle fatigues with the word police across the middle. Any fool can get that kind of an outfit or make that kind of an outfit. What's to stop some idiot from joining in with these people, how are they supposed to know you're not one of them if you've got the right outfit on and the right guns and shit? You know what I mean? How am I supposed to know as a citizen that these people are actually working for the government who actually actually have any kind of authority over me whatsoever? If you try to arrest me or any person, any American citizen on the streets of America when I have not committed a crime and you don't identify the reason for the arrest, you take me away to an undisclosed location in an unmarked vehicle. I call that kidnapping because you haven't followed the due process of arrest that normal police would follow. These people have less rules than the actual police as far as I've seen on, the, on, on, on news reports. And that's pretty disturbing because, uh, you know, ever since George Floyd was murdered, 
um, there's been 25 million people all across America demonstrating against police brutality. And since George Floyd was murdered, there's been more police brutality in a shorter space of time uh, than at any time that I can think of in my lifetime. And I'm 58 years old. So, uh, you know, the situation is pretty dire and it strikes me as uh, highly unwise and problematic and ironic that uh, the response to protests against police violence is increased police violence. That's untenable on its face. It can't work as well um, in any, in any uh, realistic sense that uh, spares human life. So these, these troops are in Portland. They are deliberately instigating trouble. Now, there may be troublemakers amongst the peaceful protesters in Portland. Quite frankly, I would be surprised if that was not the case because throughout history, whether it's in the United States or, or anywhere in Europe or even in Asia, there's always the, the authorities always put in infiltrators into a demonstration so they can find out, you know, what the basic plans of the demonstrators are. That's kind of normal. And you almost expect it to be the case because, frankly, the uh, authorities would be derelict if they weren't trying to find out whether the demonstrators wanted to cause trouble or whether they were peaceful demonstrators. Having said that, that's not the same. Uh, infiltrating for information is not the same as being an agent provocateur. And throughout history, um, the authorities have put people on the other side to try to start violence against the official authorities so that the, they then have a, an excuse to crack down. That trick is hundreds of years old. The British used to use it when they, when they had the empire. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, it doesn't matter what country you come from. It doesn't matter what causes are being fought for. That's an old trick. And quite frankly, we shouldn't fall for it in the United States of America because there are quite clearly people who want this trouble on Trump's side, Trump being chief among them. Now, I've been kind of disturbed at the naivete of some of the uh, commentators I've seen on the news recently. Um, when I lived in the UK, I curated my own news on the internet. And um, since I've been here for the past couple of weeks, I've allowed myself to uh, watch a bit of television news to see what y'all are exposed to here. Um, and the most striking thing to me about uh, the discussions I've seen on this topic is the commentators who were against Trump, uh, uh, who basically are, are against these actions by Trump with these police. They're saying, oh, you know, this is political theater. He's trying to uh, energize his base and blah, 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 whatever. OK, I got a couple problems with that. Number one, Trump's base doesn't need energizing. They're not going anywhere. The people who are loyal Trumpists wouldn't care if he set the fucking country on fire. OK, they don't care. They're with Trump and that's it. It's a cult, right? Uh, his policies don't matter. Uh, the consequences of his actions don't matter. Uh, his words don't matter to them. Nothing matters to them except him owning the libs and, and making the libs look bad to them. Well, that kind of shit. Just my opinion. Anyway, uh, but what I'm really concerned about is I don't think this is political posturing. I don't think this is Trump trying to... Uh, trying to energize his base. As I say, his base is energized already. They don't need more excuses to vote for him. They're not voting for him based on logic or policy. They're not. Um, but what I see happening and what I can't believe is not being discussed is if Trump gets away with what's going on in Portland and he's already been talking about wanting to put troops in other cities like Albuquerque and Chicago and even New York, right? He says he has 50, 60,000 troops that are ready to go. They're going to sort stuff out right away. I don't see this as political posturing, my friends. I see this as Trump putting his little chess pieces in place. Albuquerque, Chicago, any place else he decides to put them, St. Louis, Baltimore, you name it. Wherever he puts these troops, uh, he's putting his pieces in place so that if he decides in November to challenge the election, the troops will already be there. Because here's another thing I don't hear being discussed, which should be like on the front of everybody's fucking mind. Not just about Portland, but since Portland is where it's happening today, I'm going to mention Portland. Um, let's just suppose for the sake of argument that uh, the protesters organized themselves and everybody said, you know what? We're not going to protest tonight or tomorrow night. And then no one showed up to protest and the streets were empty, completely empty. There's no protesters. What excuse do the troops have to be there? And if there's no protesters the next night, do the troops need to be there? What about if there's no protesters for three nights? Do the troops need to be there? What I'm driving at is, 
as with Afghanistan and every other foreign intervention that we get tangled up in over the past 20 fucking years, there's no fucking end game strategy. No one is talking about what conditions must pertain and or for how long for Trump's troops to get the fuck out of your city. And that's because, my friends, there is no end game. There is no intention to get them out once they're in. This cannot be allowed to stand. You are watching democracy fall down around you right the fuck now, okay? It's all hands on deck, friends. It's all hands on deck. If this comes to where you live, protest. Risk it. Go out and risk it. Because um, the only way is people power at this point. And that's not just protest, of course. We've got the ballot coming up on November the 3rd. And um, as much as there's going to be uh, shenanigans and voting suppression and everything else like that, um, every single person who is capable of voting um, has to vote, must vote. It's, and, and I'm not inclined to tell people how to vote, I'm just telling you how not to vote. Don't vote for fucking Trump or anybody in the GOP. Okay? Please. Because these fuckers don't give a shit about you. Right? These guys honestly think, I, I think these guys just think we're living in the end times and it doesn't really matter what we do because the whole thing's going to come down and blah, blah, blah. The way the GOP have behaved in Congress is as, is as if they expect there not to be any consequences for their misbehavior. The only way there can be no consequences is if Trump cheats and takes over with an authoritarian crackdown. Um, other than that, uh, you know, the polls are all looking uh, pretty bad for Republicans right now. And of course, there's still 100 days till the election. Anything can happen. But the direction the changes are going in don't look good for Trump. And his putting troops in American cities is not going to make him more popular with anybody except for the people he already has. He's not gaining support with these actions. Meanwhile, sooner or later, the more people that, uh, that get in confrontations, the more of these police go in more different American cities, the more likely it is that sooner or later, a citizen will use his or her firearm to defend themselves from illegal uh, seizure. And when that happens, the shit will come down. And the very last thing that any of us want to see is American troops firing on American citizens in American cities. <sighs> the fascism has been descending on us for quite some time. When you've got police in unmarked vehicles kidnapping people off the street, it's here, it's now. And it's time that we recognize it. We call it what it is. We look at it in the face. Trump is a fascist president. The GOP, as currently configured in Congress anyway, is fascist. I know that's not comfortable. Roll it around in your head for a while before you reject it. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, one more point I wanted to make. One more point. You know, uh, a lot of people who are supportive of Trump and his secret police... Um, don't seem to recognize the irony of their own position because two and a half months ago, the same people that are saying, hey, you know, this is perfectly fair and appropriate. Two and a half months ago, when people showed up with machine guns and, and semi-automatic weapons on the state capital of Michigan, demanding to get into the legislature with their fucking guns, I didn't hear them saying, hey, we need to meet these guys with federal police because they're attacking federal buildings. They're, they're, they're charging federal buildings with weapons. No, those same people who are saying that this is justified now with the federales, those same people were saying, hey, those guys with their guns in the federal buildings were just exercising their Second Amendment and First Amendment free speech rights, and there's nothing to worry about. You can show up with guns at state capitol buildings demanding to get into the legislature, and that's fucking okay to them. But spray painting some graffiti on a federal building is somehow a fucking capital offense? Go fuck yourself. No, that's not America. That's not freedom. I don't really recognize this country as the same country I left back in 1989, and that pains me to no end. And we need to get back to a place where the rule of law is the norm, not law and order. There's a difference between law and order and the rule of law. The rule of law applies even to the people who make the laws. Law and order comes down from the people who make the laws onto the rest of us. 
It's oppressive. That's not what we need. We need the rule of law. Trump and his people need to be held accountable for their crimes. And right now, as far as I'm concerned, Trump is clearly exceeding his power. He should be impeached again by Congress as uh, untimely as that might seem. That's just my opinion. Okay, that's me done. Thank you all for watching. I look forward to being ripped to shreds in the comment section down below and a vigorous discussion. All right, I'll see you tonight on Breakfast Club. Peace and joy.